And here's the new heavyweight champion. How are you going to walk, Mac? I'm going to walk like my old pal Dempsey when he was champion. <laughs> Show you how, Angle. <laughs> In the summer of 1934, Max Baer, boxing's most flamboyant and charismatic character, knocked down Italian giant Primo Carnera 11 times during their title fight to become the 13th heavyweight champion of the world. He blended style with substance, quite possibly laying the blueprint for a certain future heavyweight who would one day proclaim himself the greatest of all time. And Ali says, well, hey, he's copying me. He's copying me. And then he said, well, wait a minute, he was before me. Maybe I'm copying him. While a Carnero fight made him a champion, Bear's previous fight made him a hero. A year earlier, he fought Max Schmeling of Germany. Bear's grandfather was Jewish, so Max's manager Ansel Hoffman convinced Bear to wear the Star of David on his trunks, thus pitting Bear against Hitler's favorite, Schmeling. Uh, my dad wasn't an Orthodox Jew, but Ansel Hoffman took this young kid of 23, 24 years old and convinced him that he represented the Jewish people. When the underdog Bear knocked out the German favorite at Yankee Stadium in front of 60,000, he became a hero to the Jewish community community worldwide. Even the U.S. Postal Service issued a Max Bear stamp with the Star of David on it. Jack Dempsey paid my dad the best compliment he'd ever been paid. Uh, he said that at that time, the night that my dad beat Max Schmeling, he could have beat any of us. He also proved that he was a great fighter, a third gentleman in the ring, and one of the greatest fighters the American public has, has ever had, if not the greatest. And I predicted Max to be champion for a long time to come. Bear lost his world title to Cinderella man James Braddock in 1935. And as his career wound down, Bear settled in Land Park, where he and wife Mary raised their three children. Good stories going around about the three little pigs. This is the first picture taken of the three little bears. Papa Bear, Mama Bear, and little Cubby Bear. During the 1940s and 50s, Bear continued his film career. He hosted a radio show called Time for Max and did some work for a car dealership all the while entertaining Sacramentans everywhere he went. Everybody knew him as Max. Everybody would wave at him. He'd, you know, drive down in a convertible with his sh shirt off and, you know, he's always tan. You know, whether he was at the grocery store or going down to the state capitol, he'd walk in the state capitol with his shirt off. I mean, he just was, he was a character. Suddenly, in November of 1959, the worlds of boxing, Hollywood, and Sacramento lost one of the most colorful characters when at age 50 Max Baer died of a heart attack. When we were driving down following the Hearst going out to St. Mary's Cemetery there were um, people lining the streets waving goodbye and saluting my father. Joe Lewis and Jack Dempsey were pallbearers. Nearly a half century after his death Max Baer is still contributing to the Sacramento community. A heart fund in his name has raised millions in the South area, a neighborhood park honors our city's heavyweight champion. He had the kindest, gentlest soul, um, loved everyone.